G'day football fans and welcome back to our Eric Ten Hag rebuild of Manchester United here on Football Manager 22 here on Dylan on the Ball. Today we'll be taking on Newcastle United in the Premier League, a battle of teams that have just spent just insane amount of money, basically, uh, especially when you look at, I mean, the layout transfer and it is going to end up costing us 70 plus million. And in the same window we've signed Jaden Sancho and Cristiano Ronaldo. I get that Ronaldo didn't have a transfer fee but yeah, like obviously there's a lot going into that money wise I've uh, I've got us here on our overall stats screen just so that you can look at this time the average rating for our squad so quite a number of players that perhaps you wouldn't expect to be quite high as they are like Luke Shaw is actually he's actually leading the way currently uh, you can see he's created a number of clear chances which is absolutely spectacular then with Anthony Langer, prior to, I think he tore his hamstring is the injury that he's, you can see he's got um, the fitness test uh, marker there on his name, I don't know what else to call it, but prior to tearing his hamstring, uh, he was absolutely on fire. Same with wan Bissaka, and, un, and then uh, sort of a name that you wouldn't expect, Harry Maguire, actually quite high up there. He did get a red card quite recently, it might even have been in the last Premier League game, can't remember. But it was two yellows, um, so I mean, we also then had a nice sort of contrast between emails, where it was one email was the one that you get for you know the whether the player accepts your fine for their you know that sort of thing. One email above that was the sort of news report that an, a manager is viewing the game with a view of wanting to sign someone, and it was Antonio Conte was at that game watching Harry Maguire, so. Just him getting a red card next to him being wanted by someone else was just brilliant. Um, I really, really wish that they would put in an offer. You can see he's still wanted somehow despite his red card. Hopefully in January they come in and we can, I don't know, go go another direction. Maybe like a, a, a Bastoni, a, a Pau Torres, that sort of ilk, that sort of calibre. We'll see how we go though. Hopefully we get... Uh, one or two players who, who do get good offers in January. You can see there's a, a decent amount of rotation, no real standouts in, in terms of uh, appearances made, other than, I, I guess, the obvious Ronaldo, who I'm like, why would I ever leave him out? And uh, David De Gea is the other one. Oh, and I guess, I guess Paul Pogba's not too far behind. Far behind, though, I guess, is a way to put it. What's Bruno Fernandes doing that far down the list? It, you'd expect better from him, honestly. Maybe we need to have a look at the role that we're playing him in, because he's been playing as an advanced playmaker, I think. Maybe wanting to change him to a, to a Mazala, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Something like that, where we can hopefully just get the best of him, because uh, he, like he clearly is better than how he has been performing. He should be up there with you know, the greats of our squad, like Maguire and Tellers and... Anthony Alanga, apparently. Just before we catch you up on what's transpired since you were last here, since we beat Ajax in the Champions League, there's been six matches, so a fair amount's happened. Uh, but before we get to that, I just want to compare the transfers for both ourselves and Newcastle United. First which, let's just go with ourselves, why not? Nice and easy. So <laughs> this summer, just gone and the reason we didn't have much money to spend I, I guess is that we've I mean we've spent the most of that really on Leao in a very complexly structured highly structured spaced out negotiated deal of uh, of 70 million pounds potentially totaling up to 95 really that was I was just trying to stretch the money as far as it would go uh, it may end up not being a great thing because it, I mean, I think there's a lot of bonuses for winning FA Cups and Champions Leagues and that, and that sort of thing. Or we'll never win anything and that's fine, really. Main thing is though that total of £190 million. I know not all of that 190 will be spent in this one window. Uh, like Rafael Leao, I think we only paid about £30 million up front, so that the rest of the 40 million guaranteed plus the 25 million that may eventually come will be over a number of years potentially. So it says 190 million, but it's probably a bit less than that when uh, when you think of just this window alone, I suppose. Looking at the outgoings, 
we didn't make much money at all, did we? Who have we got rid of? We've brought in £26 million pounds in fee. 25 of that was Daniel James. That's a lot of free transfers. That's a lot of loans that haven't brought us in money. Uh, that was a deal we brokered. The uh, Hannibal loaned out to Freiburg. I mean, surely we could have got a bit more cash for some of these, but I guess it is what it is. And, and you know, you hope that a club of our, uh, our size can uh, can hopefully bring in a lot in revenue in uh, uh, merchandising, our ticket sales, all that sort of stuff, uh, as well as hopefully competing on all fronts and, and bringing in money that way. As for Newcastle, it is just as ugly, really. You can see there is the deals that they sort of did in uh, in January in real life, I guess, uh, where they've brought in Chris Wood, Bruno Guimaraes, Trippier and Dan Byrne. I'm not sure if Willock came prior to then or not, but, you know, they've spent a hell of a lot of money. They've also then, since the game has started, and all on deadline day, brought in Felipe from Atletico Madrid for a, a decent fee, really, like a, like a good bit of a bargain. I mean, it's not going to be fantastic for them, you know, in, in the grand scheme of things. They'll probably score against us now that I've said that. But to, to get a, you know, first team player for a, for a Premier League side, £8 million is a, a good, a really good deal. They've then brought in Henrik Mkhitaryan and Herving Lozano, totaling their whole spending up to £165 million, and they've only made £8 million back. They've sold Emil Kraft, Shelby and Matt Ritchie, loaned out Paul Dummett to, what, Mexico? Where's America? Where's that America club? Where are they? Yeah, Mexico. Matty Longstaff's out on loan. Freddie Woodman's out on loan. Jeff Hendrick. Oh, they might be gone out in uh, reality, actually. But I've, what, since when does football manager do undisclosed fees? Like, why could we just do, like, believed to be three million pounds and add that? Like, let's not, you know, let's just say it for what it is and not, and not be too fancy about it. Or if you're going to do that, let me do that. I would, maybe I didn't want to disclose that I spent such a stupid amount on Raphael Layout. I don't know. I want the option at least. But this Newcastle squad is a lot better than the one that started this season. Uh, obviously since Eddie Howe has taken over, they've done it. He's, he's done an incredible job in all fairness to him. He, he's, it's been absolutely brilliant to see the, to see the turnaround that they've made uh, in short, such a short space of time. Of course the being able to spend money on, you know, what's that? That's close to 100 million, isn't it? Maybe more, more, surely. On uh, on those four players, five players, even. Wood, Kimaraes, Trippier, Willock and Byrne. It's over 100 million that they were able to spend there. Um, I guess I guess that helps, but I guess there has to be that man at the top that uh, brings it all together. Like, not Eric Ten Hag, and let's... Uh, Let's get to just how well he has been pulling it together since you were last here. And well, it's a bit of a mixed bag, really. So last time you were here was the Ajax game you see at the top of the list there. We've then had wins against Leicester, West Ham and Ajax. A inexplicable 3-0 lost away at Southampton, who were 18th at the time, I think. And then most recently, we've lost to Ferenc Varos. Again, we dominated that game. We absolutely scored way more. Oh, scored way more. We did not score any, actually. We got a much higher XG. We had all the chances in the world. Just nothing happened. It was a heavily rotated team just because of only being a few days after Brentford and just before uh, Newcastle as well. We did sort of rotate the team and, and try to give some sort of people who haven't had as much time. Like Cavani started. I started Lingard and Rashford and Matic. Lindelof and Eric Bailly and you know it was uh, it was a very much rotated 11 that I, I thought could still do the job couldn't definitely couldn't um, but anyway let's uh, let's have a look at these goals so away against Leicester we had a very slow start I think we didn't actually have a shot until after 20 minutes or so and rightly so Leicester took the lead 13 minutes in through Aozi Perez after a good cutback from uh, Harvey Barnes we equalised, a good pass there from Fred out to Dallo, plays through Lingard, who's parried effort, falls at the feet of Leao for one all, and you look, guess who? 
it had to be Cristiano Ronaldo, played through there by Jesse Lingard, firing it in, giving us a 2-1 win. Easy. We then hosted West Ham, where the only goal of the game was this absolute bullet header from the man himself, Harry Maguire. We then took on Ten Hag again, and this time it was a 1-0 win, thanks to this effort from Cristiano Ronaldo, he absolutely rifles that one into the top corner, 1-0. Then, I mean, the major outlier in the uh, this sort of short period was this performance against Southampton, where really they were just all over us. It, it, it was not a good performance. You can see we had a red card, we had an injury, I think it was this was Alex Tellez doing some ankle ligament damage. And it was Ward Prowse, Redmond with two assists, and uh, Shea Adams with two goals doing the damage for uh, for Southampton. See here the third goal, Shea Adams after a counter-attack. Then it was our turn to host Brentford, and not long in at all. It was uh, Norgard getting the scoring underway there. A missed header, I think it was... Uh, Varane that missed the header and let him in. We equalised through Sancho, great ball from Pogba, then a penalty to Ronaldo, making it 2-1. We had turned the game around until a great run here from Rico Henry, just making Wan-Bissaka really look average. Great counter-attack, great cross, good headed finish to all. But then who do you call? Of course, it's Ronaldo on the end of a Luke Shaw through ball here. Nice little dinked finish for 3 2. His second goal. He then got his third. Another assist for Luke Shaw on the end of a cross here. Suspicion of offside, but it was a goal. Then, in what is hopefully our most embarrassing uh, performance of the, the season, we lost 1 0 thanks to that goal from Ferenc Faros. Not even going to attempt his name. So, those results have left us in these positions. We're second in the Premier League, one point behind Liverpool. That loss to Southampton just gave Liverpool that opportunity to move ahead. And, I mean, you thought gain some ground, but they only managed to draw. So, they're, they're only the one point ahead going into today's game against Newcastle, who are in fifth. You can also see Brighton still up there, 12 games, games into the season, as well as Burnley and Wolves making up the top seven. Uh, a few surprise packages there, but hopefully we can maintain our title tilt. And uh, really, at the end of the season, I'd, I'd just love to be in the Champions League again. By no means was I anticipating this to be a title-challenging sort of season. I was much more thinking this was a, a multiple-year project to rebuild the squad a bit, to change over some dead wood and bring back glory to Manchester United the only way Eric Ten Hag knows how. We've also, in the Champions League, already qualified for the next stage. We're two points ahead of Sporting uh, Club Portugal or Sporting Lisbon, whatever you want to call them, with them being our final game of the group stage. So, I mean, a, a draw or a win makes us top of the group. Uh, a loss uh, has us finished second. It's, uh, it's simple as that. Enough about that, though. Let's kick on in to today's featured game. Before we go through to today's lineups, or I read you through anyway, because we're already there, I will just remind you to please leave a like on the video, subscribe if you're new to the channel, if you're enjoying the series, if you want to see how Ten Hag takes this Manchester United squad forward, what changes we make, and uh, and all that good stuff. Make sure you leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions for how we can make it more Ten Hagier, and uh, or what moves you reckon we should make. To make it a real Ten Hag team. Also down in the description are the social medias. There's the TikTok, the Twitter, the tic TikTok again, the Instagram, probably something else. I can't remember. Just make sure you follow on each and every one of them. I really appreciate the support we have had and any interactions that you can have really will help us out and, uh, and hopefully grow a bit of community here to you know, just discuss football like normal people. I don't want to yell. I don't want to, you know, be angry. I don't want to sensationalise everything like saying that citing Erling Haaland for £51 million pounds is ruining football. You know, like, we can just talk, you know, it's fine. Our Manchester United lineup then is De Gea in goals, a backline of Dallo Varane, Eric Bailly and Luke Shaw. Midfield of Scott McTominay holding with Fernandez and Pogba ahead of him, 
and a front three of Jaden Sancho, Rafael Leao, and the big man Cristiano Ronaldo off the back of his hat trick against uh, against Brentford. As for Newcastle, it's Dubravka, Trippier, Felipe Dambern, Target, Joel Linton, Willock, Lozano, Mkhitaryan, Saint Maximan, and Callum Wilson. Just looking at that, I'm guessing it's a 4-2-3-1, I suppose. Just with Joel Linton and Willock as the sort of holding midfielders or the, the two central midfielders and then a, a forward three of Lozano probably on the right, Maximan, say Maximan on the left, Mkhitaryan in behind Wilson. That's how I'd uh, read that anyway. And I guess the, the one thing I'd say about it is like they've made all these signings and, you know, it's, it's clearly a, a decent 11. They're up in fifth in the league and they've got a good coach who's doing a great job. But then you look at their bench and they've still got names like whoever Gillespie is, I've never heard of him, Mankio, Kieran Clark, Longstaff, Isaac Hayden, just these, you know, players that you wouldn't necessarily expect to spend their whole careers in the Premier League. You, you, like, if you know what I mean? Like, they're decent players, obviously. They've, they've probably played internationally, they've played in the Premier League here, clearly. But they'll also probably spend some time in lower divisions, you know, or be free transfers at the end of contracts instead of being bought. Like if you catch my drift, I guess. Um, whereas if you look at ours, there are a couple of those, I suppose. But there are sort of bigger, better names with the depth that we have, like Rashford, Cavani, Maguire, who's in this game been quite good. Lindelof, Fred, Henderson, you know, it's like the better, bigger names. We've got the depth. We've got the talent on the starting lineup. Can we get the three points? All right, hoping for a reaction here to our, uh, you know, less than perfect result against uh, Ferenc Varos. Re result and performance, really, I suppose. Like, I think we did have a higher XG, but it just wasn't up to the standard that we have been playing. And I, obviously, I'll have to take some sort of the brunt of that, as they might have a chance here early with Wilson breaking through. No, Sancho's intercepted that one. Hopefully we break away now. Oh, it's Ronaldo in behind. Ball from Bruno Fernandes, but Ronaldo can't finish, so we get a corner on the end of it. That was a quick counter-attack. I'm happy with that one. Another highlight pretty early on here. I am just, just hoping for a, a good performance and, you know, keep ourselves up there in the, in the hunt, you know. I mean, if we can sort of form a, a breakaway pack from the peloton, you know, and uh, and get our noses into the Champions League places nice and early for next year. I would not be complaining. Oh my goodness, what a goal that would have been. That was like that Di Canio volley with the sort of scissor motion, you know the one? Except this one was saved and it's a corner that was headed away really easily. So, you know, like the same thing really. I don't think there'll be a chance on the end of this, but we'll see how we go. No. Gives it away stupidly. It's fine. We're fine. I was right about the way that they're lining up, and when I just think about it, one, it's still weird seeing Joel Linton as a midfielder. It suits him. He's it's he's much better at it. It's just still weird. But seeing Willock and Joel Linton as their two sort of center mids or holding mids in the 4-2-3-1, Surely, like, Pogba and Fernandez are licking their lips a bit, right? That's who we should do the damage. Or with crosses from Dallow into Rafael Leao for a headed goal. Is what was that, fifth, sixth of the season? One of them. That 70 to 95 million is looking cheaper and cheaper by the second. As Rafael Leao heads us into a 1-0 lead away at Newcastle. Not too long after, we've got another chance. We did set up the long throws, just because, well, it's football manager, and we sort of have to, I suppose. You know, when it when it's as overpowered as it is, why not? Speaking of overpowered, Ronaldo makes it 2-0. <laughs> that was perfect. That went well. He's already got 13 goals this season. We're in, what, November? Bloody hell. What a season he's having. 36, and he's still absolutely banging them in. Fernandez this time with a great ball to Leal. A number of good passes here from uh, Fernandez early on. 
he won't get credited with, with much for that one, but it was a great pass to Leao who gets the assist. And straight away into another highlight where we start with the ball and Dallow gets put through down the right. Can he find Ronaldo? Oh, he can, but Ron Ronaldo can't find the back of the net this time. Wow, we are absolutely firing here. This is the reaction we wanted. Oh, off the line. Doesn't matter. It's 3-0. What's that? Three goals in six minutes? Five, six minutes? That's absolutely nuts. This is the reaction I was talking about. Corner swung in by Sancho. Header cleared off the line, but the clearance falls straight back to McTominay, who laces it in. Man, what a, what a spree. And we're straight into another highlight. Hopefully it's us again. Ooh, nearly. Nearly won the ball up high there. I was saying that it was maybe going to be midfield that we dominated, but it's been the wide uh, wide positions, like uh, Dallow getting forward has been nuts. I suppose uh, Bruno has had quite a game. Doesn't show it down in the uh, in the ratings down the bottom, but his, his passing's been something good. Something good for once. Mm, looks like this will be a Newcastle highlight. Nope, we won it. Here's Leao. Taking on Trippier, we should have the beating of, but Trippier does well to track back. But Luke Shaw whips in across towards Ronaldo. Oh, just about clips the bar. Wow, that was three goals in four minutes. That is absolutely wild. That's the reaction we wanted, though, from, from the disappointment of Ferenc Varos. And here's Fernandez with a chance to whip one in. Oh, Varane at the back post. Cuts it back for Sancho. It's 4-0, 32 minutes in. This is nuts. Is this real? Or is this going to be one of those stupid football manager matches where it ends like 11-3 or something? This time it's Varane at the back post, cutting it back for Sancho. After a, a good Bruno Fernandes corner whip, uh, free kick whipped in. Another sort of secondary assist for, for Fernandes. And six minutes to go till half time. It's another highlight. And this time it's Fernandez playing in Sancho. Oh, good save to Bravka. I was, I'm pining for a Fernandez assist now with the the great passes he's shown this this game and the good crossing and all, just everything. You know, everything's coming up Bruno and Eric Ten Hag at this point. Oh, crossed in, headed away. Pogba on the edge of the box. I think the highlight might have passed. Wow, what a first half this has been. 14 shots to 3, 2 XG to 0 0.2. Closing down at half time is another highlight. Hopefully us again. It's Sancho looking for Leao out right on the left. Just about keeps it in. Swings it in towards... Back to Sancho. Like the longest range... Oh, it was nearly Fernandez. Longest range 1-2 is what I was going to say. Oh, no. Now Wilson... Looks like he dived, really. Is that going to be a red? Oh, thank God. Just the way that it stopped and sort of followed him along, I was panicking. Trippy with the free kick straight into the wall. And hopefully we are home and hosed to half time. No, Trippy keeps that one in, swings it in, but it's headed away. End of the highlight and end of the half just about, hopefully. Wow, what more can you say? Absolutely clinical, absolutely elite. The reaction we were hoping for, the performance we were after. And we're really separating, you know, that that golfing class that I was talking about with the, the seasoned professionals like we have got. Fingers crossed. We can uh, keep it going in the second half. I, I'm not sure if goal difference will be important this season, but may as well start early. Into the second half here. I don't know why all my players are sad. They're winning 4-0 away at St. James. Should be having a grand old time, really. All right, nothing's happened in the first 15 minutes, so we're going to make some subs thinking we'll give Rashford a run and just maybe Fred or do we have Matic? No, Matic isn't there. We'll go with Fred for McTominay just because of his yellow card and he's in a, I guess, a, <laughs> a high traffic position. Um, so we've made the two subs. We've got one left that we can make a bit later. Maybe bring on Cavani for Ronaldo or, or something like that. Second half really not living up to the first here. 
as we're over 20 minutes in and haven't had a highlight. This is about when we scored three goals, so should be happening. All right, here's the first highlight. We are what? 25 minutes in. Oh, it's Fernandez through on goal. Oh, saved by Dubravka. It was a great pass from Paul Pogba putting Fernandez through. Just can't find the finish. Can we from the corner? Headed away and it's Fernandez again. To an offside Sancho. All right. It is what it is. All right. We have made the third and final change there. You can see it was popping up with telling us how tired Diogo Dallo is. We brought on Lindelof for him. Just there's no one Basaka because of his injury. Or was it his suspension this time? One of them. Who knows? We brought him on just to as a placeholder. Just sit there. Stop them from scoring. Uh, and 81 minutes in, we've got another highlight. We need to get the ball away from our goal. We're just dicking about with it. Sancho on the right here to f Fernandez, but we've lost it. Now it's Mkhitaryan finding Wilson, who lobs it over towards Lozano. Can't find his man. De Gea lumps it forward this time. Must have heard me. And Newcastle come back at us again. It's St. Maximan in behind. Saved by De Gea. Comes up big when he needs to. Sign of a good goalkeeper, you know. He's, he's not done much all day. Comes up when he needs to. The corner for Newcastle. Headed away by Pogba. Another Newcastle corner, though. Just after it. And this time it's a goal. It's Jamal Lascelles at the near post. Flicking the header on past David De Gea. Look, we can't be happy with it, but... I mean... What, what should we have done differently? Not had Fred at the front post, I suppose. Oh, this isn't good. Maybe getting another here. Oh, wow. That was almost incredible from, uh, from Henrik Mkhitaryan. Hitting the post with a, a curling effort from outside the box. We've gone the other way with it. Can't win the header in the box this time. No winding down. We might have our three points. Rashford into Ronaldo, whips it out towards Shaw. Shaw has been very good again. He, he just gets up and down, doesn't he? Missed header from Trippier. Oh, wide from Ronaldo. You wouldn't suspect it. You wouldn't have guessed it. Winding down now. Should be it. And it is. We've got our three points away at St. James. Can't complain about that. Look, just quickly before we look at the screen, you might notice something here. I mean, Arsenal are in 14th after 13 games, and they've sacked Arteta and replaced him with Per Mertesacker. It's a weird one. That result against Newcastle there does have us up in two first, for the time being anyway. Liverpool obviously having a game in hand. We've just played the first game of the weekend. But that, uh, that'll that wrap it up for today. Thank you guys so very, very much for watching today. Make sure you do like, you comment, you subscribe, you follow us on the socials, the TikTok, the Twitter, the Instagram, the Twitch for when that starts. Make sure in the comment section or on Twitter or on Instagram, just let me know what you're thinking of the series, what you think we can do to improve it, what you think more Eric Ten Hag-esque moves we can make with the squad, with the tactics, anything like that. Whatever you reckon, I am more than happy to try and mould this perfectly in his image. His beautiful bald-headed image. Next game, you will see us go away to Tottenham Hotspur, a, a team that we should be sort of competing with for the top four, in theory. It's not panning, in, uh, panning out that way so far. Really, we're playing Brighton next, who are in third. So that's maybe more of a more important game at this point. I don't know. But you'll see us go against Tottenham. We're just trying to sort of blaze through the season, really, so that we can get to the good stuff where we can make transfers, we can really shape the team next season. So between now and then, we'll face wow we have four home games out of five before our next uh, game in the video away at Tottenham so we've got Brighton Wolves Crystal Palace and Burnley in the league and mixed in there is our last group stage match against Sporting so hopefully we top the group you'll find out in the next video make sure you tune in make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it and until next time when we try to solidify a Champions League place peace